Welcome to another show of Celebrate Life. My name is Gary DeCarlis, and I'll be your host today again. The goal of this show is quite simple. We want to celebrate people's lives while they're very much alive versus wait to read an obituary and, and then say, gosh, I wish I had met that person. This show is all about celebrating people's lives while they're here and with us. And um, I'm a firm believer that everyone has a story to tell. And this show is an opportunity for people to be able to share their story with all of you. If you would like to be a guest on the show, please email me at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Or if you have a question for our guest, you can do the same. So send uh, an email at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com, and I'll make sure that the guest gets a chance to look at it and respond to you. Well, for all transparency sake today, I want to say that I'm interviewing my sophomore and high school math teacher, Mr. Simpson, or today we'll call him Bob Simpson. He also was my father's best friend, uh, who my father who taught music at my high school in East Brunswick, New Jersey, um, and Bob were very close. And so I'm honored today to, to introduce to everyone Bob Simpson. Hello, Bob. Good morning. Hi, Gary. Oh, <laughs> good to see you, lad. After all these years. <laughs> yes, after all these years. And and there are many years that happened between then and now. I, but, uh, uh, well, we, we went our separate ways. You're up in the north, and I'm way down here in New Mexico. Yes. Um, well, so... <laughs> it's great to see you. And, and the years have, you, you look terrific. The years have done you so well. Uh, so, Young genes, that's what it is. <laughs> there you go. So I, we're, I, so. You know, Gary, when I first came to uh, East Brunswick High School on um, orientation, you know, teacher orientation that's, before the kids got there, they told me that uh, there were soccer coaches down in the gym. So I went down after uh, the meeting and there was Whitey Waldorf and Leon Florek, you know? And we were chatting for a while, and Whitey turned to me and he said, get a crew cut and shave close and we'll put you on the team. <laughs> <laughs> I looked like a, more like a That's senior than a teacher. <laughs> you know? uh, wow. I guess I've always sort of had that youngish look anyway yeah yeah and you still do and it's wonderful <laughs> but and it's and it's you, all you about just, at go on you just don't see the wrinkles that's all <laughs> <laughs> the, well the so, fact that the belly's getting bigger <laughs> <laughs> well let's let's start where would you like to start about talking about your life i know you're you're, well, you're from go on one thing that has always been with me throughout uh, my life is the fact that I, being born on January 25th, that's the anniversary of Scotland's national poet, Robert Burns. Okay? So I've always had an association with him. And it's, it's rather oh, strange, maybe you might call it. My grandfather was John Burns. Not, not that we know if he was related to Robert or not, but in, in Britain, it is the custom to name, give you the middle name of your grandfather. So I would have been Robert Burns Simpson. But mom and dad thought uh, people are going to say that, you know, talk about this, you know, we're just trying to be uh, high, highfalutin, as we would say. And uh, so they changed it to my other grandfather, Campbell, John Campbell. Mm -hmm. And so I became Robert Campbell Simpson. Campbell Simpson. Born wow. on the 
25th of January, 1936. I was born about 12.35 uh, in the middle of the day. <laughs> and at one o'clock, my father was at the football game. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were we were born at home. Yeah, uh, right. We, we didn't go to hospital, or mum didn't go to hospital. The doctor came to the house. Did you, wow! Did that ever happen here in America? <laughs> wow! Well, back in the day, maybe <laughs> a long time ago, maybe. Yeah. 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 A long time ago. Anyway, that that, that was me in this world, and now then. You were in, where in Scotland were you born? I was born in Lark Hall, which was a village of about uh, 10,000 people at the time. To be a, a town, you had to have a charter, and we didn't have a charter, so we were a village. Okay. We were the largest village in Scotland <laughs> and had the, the distinction of having the highest viaduct in Scotland. <laughs> Not much of a distinction, is it? <laughs> anyway, as I said, uh, three years later, we were. My brother came along. Unfortunately, he missed me by a day. He was born on the twenty sixth. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, my brother Johnny. Yes. Did did, did, did did Johnny live? Did he move to the United States? Or did he, he came over. Uh, yes, he came over about what sixty three, I think it was uh, December of sixty three. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it would be because I had just bought a nice new sixty four Dodge Dart. <laughs> and I picked them up from the airport and this. New oh. car, you know. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, the, my dad had flown over before that, though, and he had established himself with a job before Mum and Johnny and my sister Margaret came over. Uh, that was a long time ago, right enough. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that was even before you. So there you are. Yes, that's right. <laughs> So, what was life in Scotland like as a little boy? Uh, well, I went to school at the age of four and a half, and everybody walked to school. There were no buses or anything like that. Mm. I went to Glengowan School, primary school, because that's where my dad had gone, and you sort of followed along. And... Uh, there, it was a good school. It really mm. was. I learned an awful lot in primary school, I can assure you. We had good teachers. We had discipline. Mm. Which, <laughs> which, you know, you learned. You went to school to learn. But you had a lot of fun, just the same. Because they had a playtime in the morning of about 10, 15 minutes. And before it, this, remember we were, I was in school during World War II. Your, your right. dad was in Italy at that time. <laughs> wow. And we got cheap milk. And that was the, the big thing. The kids could get milk. It was a third of a pint. And it cost us a halfpenny, which was the well, not the that wasn't the smallest coin in Britain at the time. There still had farthings, but the halfpenny was valued at two farthings. And I used to drink five of them, <laughs> <laughs> three in the morning and two in the afternoon. <laughs> we got another playtime in the afternoon. It was, mm. a, you, you can't be thinking or holding kids' interest for too long. That's right. So you let, them right. Out, you let them get excited and run around and wear off some of that things, you know. Uh, 
and uh, that was a lot of fun. I I enjoyed, I really enjoyed uh, my schooling there. Mm. As a matter of fact, <laughs> and I, I of course I, I did work. I did work the. Uh, I I learned as much as I could. As a matter of fact, I we were. Uh, we were living, we didn't have a home. We lived, I was born in 88 McNeil Street. That was my great grandmother's house. Mm. It contained my great grandmother, my grandmother, father, mother, and me. Wow. Two rooms. Wow. <laughs> and we did have. An indoor toilet. <laughs> wow. That was a biggie. Wow. But when Dad went into the uh, army in 1940, he was conscripted. That mm -hmm. left Mum and two children, because Johnny had come along by that time. Right. Uh, behind. To, and we just lived in Manuel Street for a few years, and then I don't know what happened. Probably a disagreement between the women. <laughs> but we, we moved to my other grandmother, Granny Burns, uh, for a short time. Then we lived with great-grandfather Woods for a few, well, not very long, though. And then we lived with grandfather Campbell for a while and we lived in with a family we rented a place a room not a you know that's all you got you rented it a room uh, up in Neverson Street and I can't remember the name of the people but we ended up renting later from the Miller family in Albert Drive and then we got the news. Uh, the war was over with this time. Mm -hmm. The news that we had been given a prefab, which you would probably not unlike a mobile home, really. Yeah. They, they moved it in. They built the foundation, moved it in, set it down. Bump. Oh, that was wonderful. Oh, I bet. Two bedrooms. We had a living room. We had a kitchen. We had a, a little gas uh, refrigerator. Wow. Tiny. It must have been about five cubic feet, and that was it. <laughs> indoor plumbing? Uh, indoor plumbing, great. We had our fire. We had a coal fire, of course. This was a, We were in a mining district. That's... That's how mm. I lost my grandfather Campbell. He, I lost him to black, di black, black lung uh, by the age of twenty-seven. Oh boy! So I never knew him. He was gone before I came along. Wow! <clears throat> but we had the, the coal fire heated the water, and we could have a bath. Once a week, whether we wanted it or not. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. So, yeah. So that 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 was that part of it. Yeah. That's how we that's how we grew up. And back at school, I got burned. I was a uh, kettle of wa boiling water got knocked over, and I got my ankle burned, and it was our final exams. And Mrs. Armitage uh, had taught my father, was teaching me, and promised to teach my brother before she retired. Mm. She was a oh, she was a terrific teacher, <laughs> tough as nails, tough as nails. <laughs> but uh, my mum, I put me on the bicycle and wheeled me holding on to the bicycle to school because 
knew I couldn't really walk. Uh, wow. Remember I told you we walked all the way in. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. right. That's uh, <laughs> Jeez, amazing. But, but that's the way it was. You just did things like that in those days. There was, yeah, there yeah. No car. I mean, you couldn't have got a car anyway. You couldn't get petrol. Right. Uh, only people like doctors uh, could get petrol. And they, of course, was that was because they were out saving lives, you know? Yes. You know, so. Well, so when you think of those days and be, in your young years like that, were there people that you aspired to be or that were, you know... Um, uh, I told you about that Mrs. Armitage, right? Yes. That she is the one who made me become a teacher. I wanted wow. to. I wanted to be like her. Yep. Yep. So from there on, and I was what? To, uh, I would be eleven years old. From there on. All my aim was to be a teacher. Mm. And so all the courses I took in high school were aimed at getting me to university to get my degree to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. So wow. I guess, yes, I would love to have been a soccer player. <laughs> yeah, <for that. laughs> and, I, and I did get, uh, you know, I did get to play for the, the school. I played when I was at elementary school at Glengowen. Mm. I played left halfback. They don't have, they don't call them that anymore. Uh, a midfielder, I think they. Okay. Call them. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. And and then uh, I played in high school too, and on the on the high school team. And how how well did your teams do? I'm sorry. How well did your teams do? Were, did you have, were you successful? Your teams, did you win a lot of games? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have, in spite of the fact that almost everybody, including a few girls, uh, played soccer, you know, or football as we call it. I mean, after all, you play it with your feet. Exactly. Uh, the, we, we didn't get a, a coach or anything like that. One teacher would take us to the game and sort of supervise and hand out the uniforms and what have you. And that was it. Wow. But no, there were no practices. You just played on your own. And I was fortunate, really, because that house that I was born in backed on to the local soccer uh, oh. play a uh, field and so I went out the back gate and I was in the in the soccer on the soccer field and that's where we played and I although uh not always on the actual field because uh, the groundskeeper would come around and chase us <laughs> uh, but, wow but and there were public uh, soccer fields, of course, that you could play on. Mm -hmm. And traveling, and all I had to do when I was young, if I stayed with my grandmother, which I did at the weekends, was get up, eat, and go. <laughs> come in for lunch, go back again, come in for dinner, go wow. back again, and come in when it was too dark to play. <laughs> yes, <right. laughs> oh. Wow! So I, that was those were good days. Yes, you know, when, you're, when you're when you don't have anything, you appreciate everything you get. Exactly. And me to have a ball. Oh, I was the the center of attraction of everybody around about. No, that's I, right. Play with with a. Uh, Paper, newspapers all balled up and tied with string. Wow. Wow. And somebody found a tennis ball and we played with a tennis ball. <laughs> That's amazing. And when I got a, a size two football, well, 
You well, were that was the bees knees. <laughs> <laughs> but it's those little things in life that we take for granted. Yes. That, it is a yeah, thing. exactly. Wow. And it teaches us to make do with whatever we've got, doesn't it? Right. Absolutely. You, you make things out. You don't people don't do that nowadays. They just That's right. It. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Now you there's two awards that you got while you were in school that I want you to talk about. The well, they were academic oh. rewards. Yeah. Okay, yeah. They were I got the uh, Ducks Medal at Glengowan because I I scored higher than everybody else, you know. Uh, um, as a matter of fact, not Mrs. Armitage, she was just uh, I spoke about earlier. I worked hard for her. Because mm. you know, she just took an interest in me because of dad. Yep. She had taught him all those years before. Right. Was teaching me. And she was a tough taskmaster, right enough. And of all the weeks in school, we had uh we kept grades each day, and at the end of the week. At the end of the day, they would we would sit in seats according to our grades. Oh my goodness! Yeah, the top seat. I was in it thirty three out of the thirty six weeks. <laughs> wow! Wow! I, I lost it once to Willie Scott, uh, Bill Gracie, and Tommy Cunningham. <laughs> it, but you, well, you were the star. You were definitely uh, well, the star. Uh, oh, it was tough, though. I mean, not, Willie Scott was. Uh, it was always close. I'm wow. sure <laughs> it was always really close. But that so, kind of competition. Yeah. Is, yeah. Oh, we were friends. We played on the same soccer team. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, and I, like one of the times when I was home, I met Willie, uh, and his his son, his young son, had was an absolute genius. The kid was talking it, you know, way way before anybody else and everything else. Yeah, uh, he, Willie was a, a smart lad, right enough. Hmm. Okay, so it was Tommy. Tommy and I used to sit together. We had in the high school, uh, we had what we called chummy seats. Two people sat at the desk. Okay, okay, and and Tommy would be sitting next to me in math class anyway, not the English or geography or anything else, but in math class, and we used to see who could get through the homework fastest. The teacher would give out, Mr. Fairley, I think it was we were, uh, would give out the assignment for the next day. And we would do it before we left the classroom. We were away like crazy and we were <laughs> racing against them. But that, as I said before, that kind of competition was yeah. good. Yeah, I think so. Good. Yeah. Uh, we learned. We I learned. never, that's that's an idea that I never thought about before in terms of when you're young, having some competition to push you yeah. to do more. Yeah. It, it keeps the interest going. Exactly. Doesn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. <clears throat> so then uh, at some point, you decided to leave Scotland. Yes, I, again, here comes the football. When I was in Glasgow University, I would come home, get my work done, and I'd go play with the boys and teach them or try to, you know, uh, to, you know, uh, 
organize it anyway, sort mm -hmm. of. You would pick sides. You'd play maybe five against five or whatever number you had. Or if you didn't have enough, you'd just kick it back and forth. So when I graduated from university and then went to Jordan Hill and got my teacher's uh, diploma, I couldn't teach in Lark Hall. All the kids knew me as Bobby. <laughs> How can you teach the kids that, that no, they say, hi, Bobby, how are you doing? <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the, I was going to have to move or teach somewhere else. And Isabel, my wife, no, but my uh, had been in the United States at the age of 11, I think she was. She had an aunt here uh, who worked in service at hotels. Mm. She worked down in Miami in the winter time, and she worked in the Adirondacks in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And her husband was a chef and did the same thing, see? So Isabel came over to visit and as a child, you know, the yeah. family couldn't come, but, wow. but Isabel's fare was paid for by the by her aunt. So she came over the road. and she had such a great time. Of course, being a wee Scottish girl, she was different from everybody else and center of attention. Right. And, and when they went up into the Adirondacks, they had horses and uh, that kind of so she got to ride horses, all oh, wonderful, you know. So her eyes were big <laughs> as far as that's concerned. Yep. And when we talked about having to move to someplace else, I wanted to go to New Zealand. I mm. had been in classes with a, a merchant navy lad merchant navy during the war and he came to the university uh, on a scholarship afterwards he had been in new zealand and he thought it was a wonderful country so that sparked my interest and besides which their education system is was the same as ours so mm. i fit in yeah as far as that's been. but Isabel won out, <laughs> and we came here, uh, uh, came to New Jersey. She had a, an uncle in New Jersey who worked for, uh, oh dear, he, Consumer Reports. They, he, oh, yeah. uh, he, he, did, he worked for the printing company, McFadden, McFadden Press in Donnellan, New Jersey. Uh, he was a proofreader uh, there. And so we, he arranged that uh, I would have a job because ah. his brother was uh, mm -hmm. in education and promised. Right. That, that was only on the surface. <laughs> Don't tell everybody that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was really an English teacher. That was my major. That was your major, yeah. And so I went to different schools <clears throat> looking, you know, where were openings. But they were afraid that my Scottish accent and uh, <laughs> would confuse the, the kids or they wouldn't understand. <clears throat> And I went to Petty and to Hun, and both of them wanted me. Not because I was a teacher, but because I played soccer. <laughs> 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 it's such a competition. Isn't that soccer, something? You know, I yeah. I do this. But 
then uh, they wanted me to be in a head of a dorm of kids, you know. Yeah. But they wanted my wife to be the house mother as well. And so uh, I turned that down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Went to East Brunswick and they had filled the position. But I tried, what was the, who was the principal then? Do you remember his name? Yes, I don't. No, I can't either. Remember, he was killed in a car crash. Mm. Yeah. Well, mm. he, if you remember, remember, we had a German teaching German. Yeah. And we had a, a lady from the islands from the, teaching Spanish. He wanted to have international teachers. He That's wanted nice. to have that that broad scope. That, that was good. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there were some good ideas in East Brunswick. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, <clears throat> so he he said he would uh, make some arrangements and I could teach math. <clears throat> well, I, math was a minor, really. Right. And, uh, and so I took I took the position and started teaching and went to Newark uh, to with Charlie Hammond. Remember Chuck? Oh yes, that's right. I do absolutely. Oh, nicest guy in the world. Yes. And I used to go into Newark College of Engineering and at night time to taking uh, math courses. And then I got my extra sick credits that I needed to, uh, you know, to get my qualification in math. Right. That was a lot. That was good, though. Charlie was a, it was good working with Charlie and good, good being with Charlie. We we also played golf together. <laughs> wow. And and then you 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 ended up coaching. I ended Soccer. up coaching. Because if you, uh, I don't know if you remember the history of it, but when the high school opened, it had, uh, what did it go through? It started with taking eighth grade, ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th. But then the other two uh, junior highs, Right. really going and so eighth grade disappeared and that was as much as Whitey Waldo was qualified to teach he wasn't qualified to teach the high school yep Leon was Leon yep, yep. Uh, it's funny we were all in math isn't it <laughs> yes <laughs> interesting uh, so Leon became the head coach and they needed a JV coach and so I got the job. Wow. JV coach. Yeah. And that, uh, I had a, I never had a losing season after <laughs> there. That was, the, that, oh. that, that doesn't surprise me. Do you remember Lou Cosa? Yes. He came along and he became the sophomore coach when they wow. did that. Yeah. Wow. Great team. He ended wow. up, uh, being a girls soccer coach, what a fantastic record. So we taught him well, because he didn't play soccer. Wow. <laughs> he nice. just learned it by watching and look, yeah. you know, and working with us, with Leon and I. Yeah. But he became very wow. successful as a coach. How did you meet my father? Ah, uh, well, I love music. I love music. And I went along to the the concert, the first concert that was on, you know. Mm -hmm. And I heard him play that saxophone. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Could he make it sing? Yeah. And so being outgoing, as, I, as you no doubt realize I am, <laughs> <clears throat> I, you know, I introduced, I hadn't met him. Yep. I went and spoke to him. And, 
got involved that way. We we, were, <coughs> we chatted. Then, the, <coughs> excuse me. Once we got to uh, to be acquainted like that, I would go to all of his concerts, and I recorded them. I That's was right. putting that booth up above there with an old reel-to-reel -reel recorder, right? Uh, and got the microphones out there, and and all of these concerts, band concerts, and the and the the concert band concert. Yes, well. yes. And when it came to we got to go to uh up to buffalo where your dad was born right right yeah and with the drill team and uh, band and everything we were in the parade wow and he he need he needed somebody to come along and you know help look after the kids yep yep so he asked me and we went up to Buffalo, and uh, oh, that was a that was a nice thing. Okay. And that that was my first. Uh, I got to see a bit of Niagara as well. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> We've been up there. Did you get and, to meet my uh, grandparents? I I didn't meet any of the family. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a big treat. I have all those tapes here. Oh, uh, you have. I have all the, all those uh, tapes. I, and then later we went down to Disneyland, uh, the Disney one in World. Disney yeah. World. Yeah. Yep. Disneyland is California, and we that was another trip that we took together. Look, <laughs> that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And then when your if your your dad I remember had. Uh, lost his hearing on the lower notes when they yep. lost his leg he lost yep. his hearing there as well so he asked me to uh, pick him out hi-fi equipment you know mm -hmm. so we went along the radio shack which was just all, it was right there where that mall is now isn't it yeah one yep. time and we got a an amplifier, and we got the turntable, we got the speakers, and I set them up because he couldn't hear. Them. He oh. couldn't hear the lower notes. Right. He got to a certain level, everything was fine. Yep. And that Interesting. Was fine. Interesting. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And he even called the dog sexy, didn't he? That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the, dog, the dog was called Sax. Music was his that life. Saxophone of his. Oh, uh, he had yeah. it. He had it. He won it as a youth. That's right. And he had another one, but he uh, he didn't particularly. He preferred to keep that saxophone that he won as a that old one. He had it repaired so many times. And That's right. And, person who repaired it said, you know, check, <laughs> this is not going to last much longer, you know, if this goes again, I'm afraid you've had it. Yes. So no one ever happened to that saxophone. I have it right here. Oh, <laughs> but you don't play. <laughs> I used to play, I used to play, no, I don't play that one. I would not ever attempt to play that one, but I played saxophone through high school and then, um, a little bit after, but not much after. And I, I, you know, I consider myself someone who loves music, but I'm not a musician. No. He was a musician. He had that oh, yeah. gift. He was a natural. Yeah. He was. Yeah. He could yeah. make it sing. Oh, yes. But yeah. remember when uh, he was blowing a trumpet when he burst something in an eye? And he can only see halfway. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It didn't, didn't bother him, not. He carried right on. Never stopped him. That's right. Even with that artificial leg, he would still march, march, march. Yep. Oh, oh he loved his music. Uh, yes. Yeah. 
So you stayed with teaching long after I had graduated. And then at some point you, you said, it's time to move on. Well, yes. Where we lived in uh, Piscataway, hmm. uh, it was growing, unfortunately. It mm -hmm. wasn't when we bought the house originally. Uh, there weren't houses all around us. There was a few, and that was fine. But people that moved out to the country, <laughs> the first thing they did was buy a dog or bring a dog and tie it outside, and it would bark all day, mm. and it drove my wife crazy. Mm. She uh, actually sought help, uh, medical help or the uh, psychologist to try and uh, overcome this. But right across the road, directly across from us, was a big Alsatian. You call them German Shepherds. Oh, yeah. And it was a policeman's dog. He was a policeman. And as soon as he would go to work, she would put it outside and it oh. would bark at everything, kids, birds, cats, birds, whatever, you know. Mm. Broke my wife bananas. Great. I'd come home and find her in tears. So uh -huh. we had to move. Yeah. We had to move. And... My father, by this time, had um, gone out on a trip to California and enjoyed it there, you know. Mm -hmm. so we set out, we had a travel trailer, uh, it was a, what, a 28 foot or something, mm. and uh, a big Ford station wagon to pull it, and we just set out. We had to go to Cal to Florida first, because that aunt that I told you that Isabel came over to when she was a child, she yes. had died, and we had to go and take care of the getting rid of the house, etc., and all of the right. stuff. So we went down there with. <laughs> Isabel's father and mother had come over to go with us because wow. he, would actually, he would be the one who would inherit, you know? Yes, yes. Uh, being the, the brother. And then from there, we spent the Christmas down there in 78 and 79. Went across country, came up to Albuquerque, because uh, uh, some members of my church back in Dunellen had retired to Rio Rancho, mm. which was, you know, they advertised all over the place at the time, come yeah. and live here, you know. Yes. Uh, buy a plot, an acre land or something. <laughs> and uh, so I came up here. I. Because my the fellow who sang tenor with me in the choir, <laughs> he had moved here. Wow. So I, I from here we went over to uh, California and then we found that houses there were a wee bit more expensive than yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, at that time, uh you were they were in the nineties. Ha ha, I wish I'd bought one. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be a millionaire. Put an extra <laughs> zero on it now. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we were, I also went up north uh, just to see uh, the country uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, with the trailer and the kids. We had stopped the Grand Canyon and everything, you know. Mm. Uh, mm. So it was a good trip anyway. Absolutely. Back to Washington and back down again with, the, as I say, just looking at the... I quite liked Washington because it reminded me 
of lots of Britain. Mm. The same kind of plants grow there. I could see foxgloves, or I could see broom, I could see gorse, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, yep. uh, it just tugged a wee bit at the heartstrings. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Uh, but uh, we didn't know anybody up there, I, you know. Mm -hmm. We did look at property, but we decided we were, I needed to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> I had applied at a, a, a couple of schools. But you know, it doesn't. You don't transfer from one state to another. You've oh, got yeah. requalified and right. you know, lawyers and doctors and that. Right. So that was hard. No, no reciprocity. No, necessarily. No. See, <laughs> I could teach in Canada. They recognize everything from Britain. I could teach in Australia, New Zealand. My was, goodness. New Zealand was willing to pay my fare. Wow. Wow. By boat, you know, but yep. Um, yep. and but I had to promise to to uh, teach where they sent me for I think it was two years. And then mm -hmm. I I could do go anywhere. Mm -hmm. that. But though I was to teach where I was needed, shall yep. we say. Exactly. Which was which was fine, <laughs> you know. Uh, the only thing again there though was so far away. Right. You know, right. It's the other side of the world. <laughs> right. You right. don't exactly fly home. <laughs> right, exactly. No. Now, that was another reason that the United States became you know, you could get home and right. it really took from New Jersey, well, from New York, it only take six and a half hours. Right. No. So that's not was wasn't too bad. <laughs> had had your parents moved to the United States as well? They hadn't they moved, they came uh dad came about just after Heather was born. Hmm. In Sixty-three he came and the following year, Mum, Johnny, and Margaret came over. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. And, and Isabel's family, did they come over? Isabel's family, no. They only no. came to visit. Uh huh. They, uh, they were older. Mm -hmm. Isabel was the baby of the family. Okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, whereas I was the, the number one, <laughs> the first child. Yes. Uh, and my my dad worked here uh, until he passed away. Unfortunately, at the age of 64 and 11 months, he never got oh. a chance to retire. <laughs> Very young. Yeah. He had a heart. He had a heart condition. When he was in the tank corps, the first loading and border yeomanry. Funny yeomanry are foot soldiers, but he was in a tank. It was a tank corps <laughs> during wow. the war. Well, they used to have to sleep under the tank for safety. Wow. He, he went. He didn't go over on D Day. He went over just after D Day. Wow. Wow. And the, the, well, the Americans used to laugh at them. The, the, the British would go in three ranks. The first rank would be uh, firing, you know, the uh, second rank ready to go in, and the third rank getting everything prepared behind. Mm. So when you were in that third rank, you had time for tea. We <laughs> 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 used, used to get a, what they called a billy can with, full of dirt, pour petrol on it, set it alight, and boil the water for the tea. 
Oh my goodness. The British really did run on tea. <laughs> <laughs> but that, but the Americans used to laugh at them, you know. <laughs> what are these crazy right. Brits doing, you know? Mm -hmm. Making tea. Wow. <laughs> It's still my favorite drink. I'll I'll yeah. be having a cup later. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> I'll have a cup with you. <laughs> oh I, I, I really I really like yeah. I've I can't function without my tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. that's crazy. Very nice. So you ended up settling in New Mexico in the end. I ended up here. We yep. came back because uh the prices here were for houses were better. Yeah. And, and besides, I had friends. It's kind of nice to have of course. friends, isn't it? It's people yep. that you know already. Absolutely. So we found a place to rent while we uh, looked for a house for ourselves. And it was right like three doors down from a friend of ours. So, you know, that was fine. Wonderful. Yeah. And then we bought a place and stayed there for a while until we built our own place or had it built. Mm -hmm. mm. We we picked out a design and had them build it out. We out in the Mesa, I had 2.78 acres that I was sitting on, all <laughs> desert. But <laughs> it had a wonderful view of the Sandia Mountains. Wow. Now, the peak there is, what, some 10,000 feet high. It doesn't wow. look that because you're already... Yeah. You're on a plateau. Five thousand odd feet. So right. it only looks like five. Yeah, but, yeah. But it was, uh, you know, the sun comes up over it in the morning. It's just, it's quite something. It's quite That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was until somebody built a house between us and our view. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had all the lots up there were acres. Okay. You know. Yep. Uh, and he built at the back of it. If he'd built it up a bit, uh, he would have had the view. Yes. Plus land at the back that nobody else could build on. Right. Uh, uh, anyway, we decided our youngest daughter, our younger daughter, uh, had moved to Texas. Her husband was a Texan in his heart anyway. I don't know. I, I think he was actually born there. But he, you know, he, he wore his Stetson all the time. Yes. <laughs> he wore it to bed. Uh, anyway, they moved and she was pregnant. So, you know, family. Mm -hmm. Who want to be there with the grandchildren? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's we moved to Texas. Uh, but, but we had a nice house in, in Salado, Texas. And then they were going to move to another part of Texas. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I, you know, I sing. I yes. sing in the choir. Uh, I wasn't happy there in Texas with a choir, uh, without a co or being without a choir. Yes, uh, I was. I was pulled back here, mm -hmm. my old choir. Who, yes, because my other, my older girls stayed here, and we used to come through like in the summertime, and we'd come through again at Christmas time. Mm. You know, and when I come home, I go with the choir. Yes. No, so the welcome, you know. I go, oh, Bobby's here. Bobby's here. <laughs> <laughs> they missed you. Uh, so I had that, that, and Heather, of course, who 
Heather was the actress. She was the one who uh, went yes. up to New York to make her fortune and came back to New Mexico eventually. <laughs> she, did, she did the the circuit of uh, oh, what is through the uh, what are the among the Poconos? Oh yeah. Right. They had the Pocono Playhouse, and there was yes. another up in New Hampshire that she went to as, as well. They had mm -hmm. uh, three of them, and they took the shows mm -hmm. you know, in rotation around about them. So she was a singer, dancer, actress, you know. Yeah. But it was not paying money, and she was, when she did finally come back to uh, New Mexico, she weighed 97 pounds. Oh boy. <laughs> she's only she's only about five foot two though, you know. Okay. Yeah. She, was, she was skinny. It was she, it it was costing her every penny she was making for rent and just to keep going. Just, yeah. you know, whatever you could get. Bare minimum. That's, yeah. That's tough life. Yes, that's but a tough I didn't one for acting. Although I did, but only on the amateur side. Right, right. That was one thing I did in high school. I joined the drama club. We used to do one act plays. But in those days, I could learn lines like that. Now I can. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look inside my jacket to find out what my name is. <laughs> no, not quite. Yeah, that. I have. Uh, to, although. I, I can't memorize music anymore. The tune is all right. That's in there. But I can't yes. remember the words uh, of the music. So I have to have it always in front yes. of me. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. But last night, uh, you know, uh, if I get... Uh, we were sight reading, as I call it. Mm -hmm. Looking at it for the first time. You know, so you have... <laughs> You have to look at the, the notes, the words, and the director. I'm, I have a tough time with that. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> I've slowed down quite a bit, Gary. Uh, wow. Wow. I don't play soccer anymore. <laughs> no, 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 just watch. I haven't kicked a ball in ages. Did you uh, coach be, it? Oh, must be about 10 years since I last kicked the ball. Oh, okay. I was with my granddaughter. <laughs> How about coaching? Did you, Have you coached at all after you left? No, I... I uh, oh, when I came here, I couldn't teach. I would have to have taken... Right. You know, the funniest thing, I would have to have taken New Mexico history. Right. Oh, jeez. As a math teacher, what was I going to do with New Mexico history? <laughs> Did you have to take New Jersey history when you came to no, New Jersey? <laughs> no, New Jersey's New Jersey's good. Believe it or not, New Jersey is good. You know, I, uh, Interesting. They accepted me. No problem. Yeah, yeah. They did need some teachers, but they wasn't bad. When I got here, they said they had, you know, a hundred applicants for mm. ten jobs or something like that. You know, right? Nowadays, they'd give their eye teeth to get teachers. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. You're out. Are absolute. There are out over a hundred teachers short. Oh gosh. Yep. It. Uh... I'm, too, I'm too old to take it out now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, they would probably forgive the fact that I don't have any New Mexico history. But, I'm uh, sure they would. <laughs> no. You now, know, yes. Aspiration. But it, so, well, it's a mixture of cultures. You know, yeah, there's yeah. a very large Hispanic group. There's yeah. the Navajo Nation. That's right. And the Apache. Yeah. And, South. and a lot of playboys. Yeah. As well, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's really a hodgepodge, and yeah. as far as that's concerned, but that's fine. That's yep. fine. You know, well, listen, 
we're um, getting close to the end of the interview. Are there are there anything that we haven't touched on that you would like to talk about? Oh, I don't know. We've been chatting away fine, I think. <laughs> yes. How about how about um, any words of wisdom about life that you'd like to pass on to the audience? Uh, get that education. Get that education, really. And it really has to be when you're young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to be exceptional not to, uh, or to catch up if you yeah. start late. Yeah. It's really from day one, learn, encourage them. Encourage the kids to learn. Don't blame the teachers. Yes. <laughs> You know, yes. they're, they're laden down with all the responsibilities. But my son is, uh, he's pretty smart. He dropped out of high school and applied to UNM, University of New Mexico. And they, you know, he dropped out in his senior year, actually. He, mm -hmm. he wasn't challenged, yep. unfortunately. Yep. He, he needs a challenge all the time. All the time, that boy. I understand that. That boy, that boy is 50 old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, he is the uh, entry exam, you know. And then... Uh, he came up to New Jersey after a year you know, at UNM. He finished his education in New Jersey, uh, working in a bank during <laughs> when he could, uh, and whatever else. And, well, he, he graduated magna cum laude. Wow. So he's a pretty smart kid. Wow. He's in now. He went to uh, Southern California, UCSD, and all the professor wanted there was help with his book. They oh. have to publish, apparently, in California if mm. they want to maintain their professorship or whatever. Yes, and Publi publisher parish. That's it, exactly, yes. publisher parish. So that that wasn't for him. He's a, he's a bit of a rebel, like his father. <laughs> <laughs> but you know we were rebels because remember when we went on strike, when the yes, teachers, yes, oh yes, your dad and I, yes, on the picket line. You know? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that you know that that that's an experience. We were having a meeting that night as well with the uh, board and I your dad said well why don't you just come home with me and have dinner with a little doll and I and uh, I called my wife and said told her that chick had invited me to dinner that's where I first made my acquaintance with garlic <laughs> oh boy uh, and I've, it goes in everything I make no, oh, that's great. Yeah. I came home my wife said she could smell me before she could see me <laughs> yeah oh, Terry, Terry made a good Italian meal that's for sure I, yes indeed yes, yes indeed, indeed. Oh. oh wonderful <laughs> Oh, uh, well, listen, it, it's been great having you on the show. It's been great seeing you again. And I hope this is not the end. We'll do this again uh, off, off TV. Well, we'll keep in touch this time. Yes, huh? absolutely. Good. Thank, thank you very much, Bob. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs>